Hi, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to balance the reaction of potassium chlorate that decomposes into potassium chloride plus oxygen gas. So the first thing is, I just place in these little lines and this will represent the locations of the coefficients I'm gonna plug in. It always, we always place coefficients to the left of the particular compounds, all right? Now keep in mind the general principle that to balance an equation, however many elements you have here on the left-hand side, have to balance however many elements you have here on the right-hand side. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start with the first element I see, and I see a potassium, okay, K. So I only wanna work with, remember first, uh, elements that are only in one compound on the left, which this is, I mean, there's only one compound on the left, so that's obviously going to be true no matter what element we're talking about in this problem. And I also wanna make sure that that potassium is only in one compound on the right-hand side, which it is, so I love that. I'm gonna work with that first and balance it, okay? So this is where the subscripts come into play. So you got one potassium on the left and you also have one potassium on the right. So that's balanced, good, move on. Next, you're gonna look at chlorine, okay? Chlorine's only in this compound on the left and chlorine's only in this compound on the right. So that's wonderful, let's balance it, okay? So how many chlorines are there on the left? There's one. How many chlorines are there on the right? Well, there's also one. Oh my goodness, hopefully the whole problem works out this way. So that's balanced, right? And last but not least, let's take a look at the oxygen. Oxygen only exists in the potassium chlorate compound on the left, and it only exists in the oxygen gas molecule on the right. So let's make sure that balances now. So how many oxygens do you have on the left-hand side? You have three. Okay, so three. And somehow that has to equal now the number of oxygens you have on the right-hand side. Two. Mm, you got a two. Okay, now obviously this is not a true mathematical statement. Three does not equal two. But our job is to balance this. Okay, now what you wanna, what you can do here is you can think of it this way. I know some of you don't like math. I don't blame you. I didn't really like it either when I was younger, but it's a very, very powerful tool that could make your life a lot easier in many, many different dimensions, not only in school, but outside of school. So let's think about this for a second. I wanna place a variable now, okay? There's an unknown coefficient here, and I have three choices of where to place it, here, here, or here. One of three spots. Which spot would be the best place to place the coefficient to balance the oxygen? Obviously not here, because there's no oxygen even in this compound, right? So how would this in the potassium chloride? So how would that balance it? So you're really down to two. It's either gonna go here or it's gonna go here. Now, which one is better than the other? What do you think? Well, play it out. If you place in a coefficient here, you wind up screwing up now your potassium and your chlorine that you already had balanced. Now you gotta do extra work for yourself. But if you place the coefficient here, you only affect the oxygen's value, right? You only affect the oxygen's value. Now that is great because everything else was balanced. So I wanna place my coefficient in front of the oxygen gas molecule. Now what that looks like now in terms of the math is you literally just place in a little X next to that number. Okay, the two. Because that's what it's, remember, it's the coefficient that's multiplied by the subscript. It's the coefficient that's multiplied by the subscript, and that whole thing here has to equal the three oxygens on the left-hand side. So now all you do is a little math, right? To solve for x, you just divide by two. Now I know scary little, scary fractions here, right? This is gonna be three over two is equal to x. Now it's like, oh man, I thought this was gonna be easy, there's fractions. But this is actually easy, so watch. If I plug in three halves, this is now a balanced equation. Three halves multiplied by two. If you took 1.5 and multiplied it by two, right, you doubled 1.5, how much would there be? There'd be a total of three, right? And that balances the three. So that's balanced now. But one little issue, okay? Now, this, so this is technically a balanced equation. However, however, you cannot have three halves of an oxygen molecule. Either you have one, or you have two, or you have three, that's known as having a discrete quantity, okay? You have to have a certain, or it's like a stepwise function if you were to think about math. You have to have a particular amount of oxygen gas. You can't have a half of an oxygen gas molecule, okay? So therefore, this fraction is kind of improper. Although the equation is totally balanced, it's improper. So what we need to do now is we have to get rid of this fraction, but make sure we keep the ratios of one to one to three halves. Now I know that sounds complicated, but watch how easy this is in principle. All you have to do now is you're going to multiply this whole reaction, every single coefficient in the reaction, 
by whatever the denominator is of your fraction. It's so easy, it will tell you what to do. That's why the fraction's nice. Whatever this denominator is, boom. You multiply the whole equation by every single coefficient here. Okay, you multiply everything by two. So I'm gonna plug in a little two X here, a little, not two X, but two times. Maybe I should write a little dot. Two times one, two times one, and then two times, oh, what happened to the dot there? Two times the three halves, okay? So obviously now two times one is what? It's simply going to be two. So you plug in a two, okay? I'm gonna get rid of this bracket now. Two times one is what? Obviously it's a two. And now two times three halves, remember we did that already, but if you wanted to see it out, remember two times three is gonna be six, you multiply the numerators, two times one, you multiply the denominators is two, and six over two, right, you divide two into six, and that's simply three over one, which is the same thing as three, see? So that's a total of three now. So now we have everything proper, okay? Everything is proper, we don't have fractions of molecules, which we cannot possibly have, it's impossible to have a fraction of a molecule. If you have a fraction of a molecule, it ain't the molecule you're talking about, right? What's half a person? Is it a person anymore? I don't know what it is, but it's not a person, right? So uh, what we have, I, I don't know why that came up. Actually, kind of gruesome thoughts came up into my head when I thought of a half a person. Uh, but, uh, anyway, um, yeah, interesting. So, uh, well, maybe not so much. Anyway, back to business. So let's just make sure that everything is balanced here, okay? So how many potassium do you have now on the left-hand side? Well, remember you have one potassium in the potassium chlorate molecule, but you have two potassium chlorates. So therefore you'd have a two, a total of two potassiums, right? You can also just simply think about this, just take the coefficient, multiply by the subscript. So you got two potassiums, okay? How many potassiums do you have here now? Oh look, same thing, two times one is two. Great, so that's balanced. How many chlorines now? Well, two times the subscript of one gives you a total of two chlorines, right? Two times the subscript of one for that chlorine gives you two chlorines. Oh my goodness, look at how nice this is. How about oxygen? Two times three for a total of six oxygen, and then three times two for a total of six oxygen, and we're done. Okay, and we're finally finished. And that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's all there is to it. Don't look at math as scary or intimidating. I mean, anytime something might be difficult in the beginning, it's, it's always gonna look intimidating and scary, right? But it's a very powerful tool, right? I mean, have you ever played an instrument when you start sitting down at a piano or a drum set or whatever? Like when I first started playing that, I was like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but it looks interesting in the end. It looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun in the end. Right, think of the end goal, okay? Think of where you wanna be in the future. And you have to prepare yourself now to get there. So same thing with math. It might be intimidating now, but get familiar with it. Enjoy it, all right? And I promise it will make your life easier later on. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Please, if you can help us out, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, you know, your support means everything to us. So I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay, by the way, check out our channel. We got thousands of videos out there, not only in chemistry here, but we got physics, mathematics, all types of other stuff coming out. Uh, soon, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, I want to surprise you. So I won't say too much more. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye.